going on guys Rex the rebel here this is one of those movie reviews um, today I'm reviewing the Red Sun Superman movie the animated film that just came out um, I didn't know it was going to be coming out and so that's why I was even more surprised uh, when it was suggested to me and I saw an ad for it on YouTube um, so I watched it and I thought it was pretty good um, I like the concept I like the idea I didn't read the original uh, comic book that came out in 2003 um, so I wasn't really sure of what to expect. Um, I've been told that it was truthful to the source material, at least for the most part, although the ending is different. I don't know what the original ending was because I didn't read the comic. But uh, the movie was good. Um, I thought the dynamic between having Lex Luthor... Okay, so first of all, I'm going to say what it is. Superman Red Sun is where Superman was born in the Soviet Union in the 1940s. Um, I don't remember if he was named Clark that'd be funny to have a Russian man named Clark you know I don't I don't remember what his name was um, but he just kind of went by Superman because he gave up his identity because it wasn't needed um, in his mind Superman was you know an agent of of the Soviet state so he didn't need his uh, his regular name um, but he I guess gave his powers and himself over to the government when he was a child after uh, after his female kid friend was like hey you know you should give your you have these powers you have this great ability um, you, you can fly at super strength and all that you should you should provide that to help the people of the Soviet Union so I guess he does and then um, Stalin takes him under his wing and uh, <laughs> Over time, he learns about the gulags and everything, and he's like, this isn't supposed to match up with our communist ideals. How can you support equality and prosperity, but then also have people in gulags? And so he finds uh, child Bruce Wayne in there. We'll get to that later. And then he also finds his old childhood friend in there. She had been placed in the gulags because she knew who he was before he became a national symbol. Um... Safe to say he gets mad. He watches her die in his arms. He goes, he talks to Stalin. Stalin tells him that there are tragic necessities that need to be done um, in order to have a vision be fulfilled and that um, in order for things to work the way that they need to work, some people are going to have to die. And so Superman is like, you know, wise words, and he kills Stalin saying, yes, Stalin, you're right, some people do need to die, that includes you. And so he kills Stalin, he becomes the new leader of Soviet Russia. And um, Lex Luthor is the epitome of, like, American capitalism and, uh, and imperialism. And uh, so they kind of use Lex as, like, the reason, look at how terrible capitalism is. Lex Luthor, he owns the, the political system, even though he's a private citizen. And, um, and the funny thing about Lex Luthor's character is he's sort of this benevolent bad guy, right? Which he's always sort of the bad guy in the sense that he's not your traditional villain. He wants power, but he's also, like, he doesn't want people to suffer necessarily. He just hates Superman, and he wants people to kind of see him as like this savior and as this good guy. But in this storyline, the first scene that you see in the film is Lex Luthor on the phone with Eisenhower, President Eisenhower. And Lois Lane, who's his wife in this, comes in to the room, and he's like, Sorry, Eisenhower, more, uh, something more important came up. And then he hangs up. So immediately, the first scene of Lex Luthor in this film is showing you, okay, he's arrogant, so arrogant that even the President of the United States doesn't have much of an impact on him. Um, he was calling him, or the President was calling him, I'm not sure who called who first, about um, hijacking the weapon systems in Russia, which they end up doing. They have a Russian missile fire towards Metropolis. Superman then stops the missile. Um, so the, the whole thing was the United States and Lex Luthor hijacked the missile system, 
the weapon system in Russia and had a uh, a nuclear warhead or a ballistic missile go to Metropolis from the Soviet Union's weapon facility. Superman stops it. Their their manipulative take was, "Hey, we have this uh, we have this idea that we know Superman is going to stop this thing." that we hijacked and caused to hit the the eastern seaboard of the US metropolis now when superman saves the day we'll say look this guy the russians they are nothing but propagandists you know they they shoot a weapon at the united states and then they send their poster boy superman to stop it to try to claim ally and and peace and all that nothing ever came of that at this point superman was um was not the leader. Um, he still hadn't. He didn't know about the gulags at that point in time. But nothing ever happened. You know, I just I think that that was weird. They hijacked a foreign. They they hacked into a foreign government's military system and tried to commit an act of war. And nothing happened. And that happened throughout the movie. When Superman became the the leader of the Soviet Union, the premier of the Soviet Union, whatever they, uh, whatever it's called, um, they sent Bizarro in this universe, which was just a clone of Superman. Um, somehow, I don't know how they managed to clone Superman in this universe. Doesn't really make any sense. They sent him there. He dies, killing, uh, fighting Superman, and then he overloads because his structural integrity is too weak. And Lex was like, oh, well, I never expected the clone of Superman, known as Superior Man in this universe, to defeat Superman. I just wanted to see his limits. It's like, but you didn't push his limits, though. I don't feel like he did. I don't feel like this Superior Man really had too much of an impact on Superman's overall um, overall limitations of his powers. Um, but Lex seemed to think that he did. But Lois, had her problem with that was, you created this thing... And then you sent him to die. And I have a problem with that. And the whole film is Lois being this, like, woke kind of feminist type in the 1950s, 40s, and, and, and so on. And I'm just like, why does it have to be in every film? Because, to me, I understood what Lex was doing. I actually agreed with Lex's plan there even though I don't think he pushed Superman to his limits like he wanted to find. He sent a manufactured thing, which didn't seem to have all that much intelligence or sentience. All the superior man in the movie did was repeat, America first! And, um, life, liberty, freedom, America! You know, I mean, it was just a bunch of American exceptionalism slogans that just kept getting repeated from this superior man, this clone of Superman. You had no ties to him. He was in the movie for about five minutes. There was nothing in there that made me think I feel... I mean, I did kind of feel bad because it's like, oh my God, this thing is dying. But it's not really real. And Lewis got mad at Lex for basically making this manufactured being a sacrificial lamb. And she was like all high and mighty with her morals about it. I agreed with Lex in that situation and I didn't understand her issue because she's supposed to be pragmatic and everything. And um, here he is being pragmatic and trying to achieve the bottom line. The bottom line is figuring out how to stop, figuring out how to stop Superman in the Soviet Union. My nose is itchy, man. Um, but throughout the movie she made like typical feminist borderline uh well wonder woman comes in later and she makes miss Sanders quotes all the time um but lois lane made feminist borderline uh w like hateful against women quotes one of the first things that lois lane says in the movie is how um she would never be good as some lowly housewife um with no with no friends or no life or whatever I'm just like, great way to shame womanhood and, and being a mother. Good good job, Lois Lane. Good job, writers, making Lois Lane seem like an entitled bitch. Good job. 
And then um, she seems to feel like, as this American journalist, she knows everything the entire time. Um, and, and, and that just doesn't make her a very likable character. But then from her getting mad back to her getting mad at Lex, nothing ever comes of that. You know, it makes you think, oh, well, maybe they're going to divorce, not be together anymore. He's neglectful. He's not necessarily mean to her. He's just so involved with his work that he forgets about their anniversary and stuff like that. But she says, I stick with him because he is rich. He has sex with me and he's really good at it. And uh, he's going to change the world. That was, she literally said those things in the film. And I'm just like, yes, how, how feminist of you. Um, bringing back the feminist nonsense was Wonder Woman, who shows up in the film at a party um, in the Soviet Union to speak with Superman. Why Wonder Woman was even known to the public, I don't know. Um... They didn't explain. I mean, obviously, World War II, I would imagine, is where people learn who she is. But in this movie, she's a lesbian. She, uh, Superman wants her to be his partner for the world to see, you know, powerful alien Soviet Union leader and Themyscirian warrior princess Wonder Woman. She's like, no, I don't swing that way. I'm, I, I live on an island full of women. And then I'm supposed to just infer that that means she's lesbian. She doesn't say she is. But she's like, I live on an island full of women. So, in every universe, you live on an island full of women. And on, in none of those universes, are you a lesbian? For fuck's sake, the only reason why anyone knows who you are is because of Steve Trevor, a man who you fell in love with because he crashed down into Themyscira trying to fight in World War I. So I don't know why I'm supposed to think that an island full of women is supposed to automatically mean her sexuality is lesbian. Because that, that doesn't make any sense to me. But in the movie, it was like, yeah, I'm from an island full of women. What do you think that might, what do you think my sexuality is? I don't fucking know. How am I supposed to know? In, uh, in what universe does living in an all-female uh, situation in all situation um, in all female locale how does that morph your sexuality into being a lesbian they're all girls schools are, are all those girls at the all girls school lesbian no I just in what universe am I supposed to infer that because you're from Themyscira where it's all women that you're a lesbian from that I don't understand but that's the thing that they went with. Uh, and I was like, oh. <laughs> as soon as she said that, I was like, oh, God. Um, so I don't know what happened to Steve Trevor. Maybe Steve Trevor was just a dude. But, I mean, Steve Trevor's only existence in the comics was to be a love interest to Wonder Woman. Which is funny because a lot of times feminists get mad at female characters whose sole role is to be the love interest of a male character. But, whatever. Um... Throughout the film, she makes some Sanders comments. Um, she blames men for everything. She doesn't blame ideology. She blames men. She acts like women would be superior. And it's like, yes, yes. Let's have a bunch of women rule the world, make decisions. Let's see how fair they do. Let's see how well they do. Let's see how they fare. Um, but the whole thing was her condescending men. And then her being, like, untouchable. Superman, for some reason, tries to, to punch her near the uh, climax of the film um because she won't help him and she stops his punch and then she doesn't attack him and i'm just like why even do that um she was his friend and then for some reason she stopped being his friend it's like she was all of a sudden not okay with the practices that he did and she's like you're just another man and i'm just like he's superman he's an alien he's a male alien who was raised on earth who has an ideology, who's going up against American ideology. What changed? Why are you all of a sudden not his friend? Batman shows up, and uh, he's older now because it's set, I think, in the 70s or 80s. 
No, I think in this point it's the sixties actually. He's he's older. He um he's basically like an anarcho terrorist and he hates Superman because Superman didn't know about the gulags and his parents died in the gulags, which they didn't they didn't express that. They just showed that his parents were there and then they showed him. But they didn't say that his parents died. Also, Superman freed your ass. He killed the guy that put your ass in the gulags and then he saved it. And he made sure that gulags could never exist again. Why do you hate this man? It doesn't make any sense. Um, the Green Lantern Corps shows up because it's uh, an alien that was found. Uh, the alien that was found. Um, except this time it was by the government. And then they bring in Hal Jordan and a platoon of his air squadron military mates. Including Jon Stewart and Guy Gardner and a few others. And then they become the Green Lanterns. They go up against Superman... Um, Superman, of course, kind of thrashes him around before Wonder Woman shows up, and she's like, stop, no more of this, and then she's like, I won't be here to intervene in man's nonsense no more, um, and, uh, then Superman tries to hit her, and then she stops him, and then she flies away, she's like, you will never see me again, and it's like, okay, um, Superman, uh, fights Brainiac, who comes around a few years, a few decades earlier, defeats him using that technology. Uh, they can use the technological advancements of their time and of Brainiacs to uh, improve greatly Soviet civilian life. And so Soviet society and communism, Marxist dream is, is coming to fruition. It's working. Poverty is an all-time low. Mortality rates are... I mean, everyone's living longer. Um, and then all of a sudden, Lex Luthor becomes president, and capitalist America starts doing really well, whereas before it wasn't. Everyone's like, see how unequal capitalism is in America? Um, and then Lex Luthor becomes president, all of a sudden capitalism starts doing good. And for some reason, that translates to, ca uh, to communist citizens, communist citizens, and the Soviet Union being resentful towards Superman for the capitalist growth even though it's been it's been made clear that your lives in Soviet Union have improved greatly and your life your lifespans have lengthened I, I I don't really know why capitalism in the United States doing good would somehow mean that the people doing good in Soviet Union would be resentful towards Superman who is the leader of the Soviet Union at this point. I don't really understand why that would be the case. Why are you mad at them doing good and resentful when you're doing good too? I, I don't really understand that. Um, but the whole movie ha was... The whole movie was good overall, but there are just some big points of it that were really weird. The feminism and wokeness from uh, Lois Lane and Wonder Woman, because of course the two women would be, um, was in there, and that was annoying. Uh, Batman's motivations for hating Superman was pretty dumb. Um, and Lex Luthor getting away with war crimes multiple times, and then nothing happening. He sends the Green Lantern Corps to take out Superman. That's an act of war. Nothing happens. You know, I, I you, you are putting in place actions, military weapons who happen to be biological weapons because they're people with superpowers, I would consider them a biological weapon, to take out a foreign leader. That's an act of war, and you're just getting away with it. First you hijack their systems, then you, then you send a Supreme Bizarro Superman, and then you send the Green Lantern Corps. Nothing ever happens. Um, I just don't get it. I, I, I didn't understand any of that. The movie was good overall. The acting was okay. Them trying to do Russian accents was hilarious. Wasn't good, but it was hilarious, and it worked for what it was, this little silly comic book film. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Superman Red Sun. If you've watched it, let me know. If you haven't, go ahead and watch it, then let me know. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, I've enjoyed watching the film, and I've enjoyed reviewing it. And uh, I hope you guys go see it, and I hope you guys watch this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all later. Peace.